my dear brothers and sisters i greet all of you in jesus name and i thank the organizers for organizing this advent retreat through zoom and many people ask me what is the good news and even people may also may ask you what is the good news today so today all the news what we get from the television social media newspaper there are all not at all good news all the news of violence news of death news of war news of corruption and all negative news comes if you want to know what is the real good news that good news will come only from heaven we you know when jesus was born the angels appeared not one thousands of angels you read that in luke chapter 2 verse 8 to 14 when you read and they started singing carol singing during the christmas season and we all know about carol singing the first carol singing was sung by the angels who came from heaven you know what did they say first word they said is fear not because the humanity is gripped with different type of fears so first thing from heaven the news comes to you and to me is that fear not and then the angel said good news for you what is that good news jesus is born the creator of heaven and earth is born your savior is born your protector your healer is born what a good news is that it's amazing the birth of jesus christ in this world is the greatest good news and one more greatest good news we are waiting what is that the second coming of jesus christ in the first coming he was born through a blessed word in mary in the in the human form and he was a baby that's how we celebrate christmas but the second coming of jesus is not going to be born through blessed words in mary or anybody he is going to come as king of kings and the lord of lords the book of revelation chapter 1 verse 7 if you could read you will come to know and then the angel said glory to god in the highest good news is jesus is born and glory to god in the highest and peace on earth brothers and sister how do we get peace if jesus is in me if jesus is in you can jesus is the prince of peace can that peace that joy that happiness will be in you and in me today there are so many entertainment places to people run after that for joy peace happiness they may have momentary joy peace and happiness all those things fades away but the real peace comes to you when the prince of peace jesus comes and dwells in you and then the angel said good will to all men what is a good will to all men exchanging of love to exchanging of forgiveness to exchanging what god wants during christmas we love to give cake or many other gifts to each other but the greatest exchange is forgiving one another loving one another and you know obeying the teachings of the lord that is the greatest goodwill so my dear brothers and sisters jesus said in gospel of john chapter 8 verse 12 i am the light of the world whoever follows me will not walk in darkness but will have the light of life in this world there are 7.5 billion people and in this 7.5 billion people there could be two groups and the group one people who are walking in the darkness and the group two is the people who are walking in the light of the lord and what is walking in the darkness and jesus said i am the light of the world whoever follows me so jesus is the light of the world and whoever follows jesus 
so that means we are following the light so we are following the creator we are following to god who created heaven and earth that means whoever is following the light that means the devil is absent in them so that people who walk in darkness god is absent in them so they will be following the devil and his activities and his ways that is how they are followers of darkness so today in this world we will see on the two groups the followers of darkness to the followers of the light and all the people who are followers of darkness why they are following darkness the bible says in second corinthian chapter 4 to verse 4 devil has blinded the mind spiritual mind spiritual eyes of the people so once the mind and the eyes spiritual eyes are blinded and they cannot see the light so they can only walk in the darkness darkness is nothing but everything that is against the will of god to everything against the commandment of god to again the teachings of the lord but if you read in luke chapter 24 to verse 45 bible says jesus opened their mind opened their spiritual eyes praise the lord so the devil blinds you and jesus opens your mind opens your eyes so that you can see the light in acts 26 verse 18 we read that why was paul called can the bible says paul was called to open the mind to open the spiritual eyes of the people who the devil has blinded them and again the same word says that paul was called to lead the people from darkness to light and lead the people from satan to god so my dear brothers and sisters jesus said i am the light of the world and then in matthew chapter 5 to verse 14 jesus said you are the light of the world praise the lord when jesus said you are the light of the world and how many of us are light of the world so brothers and sisters we all should become to the light of the world maybe the light in your own family maybe light where you are working maybe you are a light for jesus to wherever you go that is why through the bible says in isaiah 40 verse 31 those who hope in the lord to those who hope in the lord will renew their strength and they will soar on wings like eagle to those who hope in the lord will renew to their strength physical strength spiritual strength and all kind of strength that is needed for you to live in this world and to prepare yourself to go to to heaven once our life is over so our hope must be on god who created heaven and earth to many people they have hope upon so many people trend the people whom you hope trend thought some blessing will come through them so maybe all those people would have led you into hopeless situation trend that would have you know led you to for discouragement disappointment trend depression hope oh, to brothers and sisters the bible says those who hope in the lord to will renew to their strength they will soar on wings like eagle so why god is mentioning eagle why not any other birds so there are so many beautiful birds in the world so many beautiful but god is referring that you will soar on wings like eagle to the end of the talk i will tell you about that point but before that our hope must be upon the lord why our hope must be upon the lord to god who created heaven and earth you know the heavenly father son jesus and the holy spirit they are omnipresent omnipotence they are omni signs only god the father son jesus and the holy spirit can be omnipresent omnipotent omni sign nobody in this world will possess to that power so what is that omnipresent to god 
will be present everywhere at the same time. As I told you, there are 7.5 billion people in this world. If all the 7.5 billion people call upon the name of Jesus, Jesus can be at 7.5 billion places, place in heaven, and wherever he wants. So he is present everywhere at the same time. But we human beings can be present in only one place. We cannot be present everywhere, but very few people, maybe saints and prophets, they had bilocation, trilocation. So what is that bilocation and trilocation? Maybe you are in your house and you can also be in some other country and people can see you. And that God will do only for his glory and to save some people, and to bring some miracles in someone's life. In my life, I had two times to buy location. I was surprised. I myself did not know. One young girl who wanted to commit suicide because of various problems in her life. When she was about to commit suicide, and I was in her bedroom, and she was looking at me. The house, the door is closed. The windows are closed. Who is this man standing in front of me? And as I was looking at her, and she was committing suicide and the thought of committing suicide left her and she was she wanted to know who is this man and later in during one of the bible convention she found me and she said you are the one who came to my house and looking at you i changed my mind so sometimes it can happen i'm not great because i had my location god want to save the girl so God took me there. So very few people in the world, for the glory of God, we can have bilocation or trilocation. So even St. Anthony had bilocation, trilocation. But God the Father, Son Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, they can be present everywhere, billions of places at the same time. And God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit is omnipotent. What do you mean by that? He is a supreme power, both in heaven and upon this earth. That's what Jesus said in Matthew 28 to verse 18. I have given the power, I have the power both in heaven and upon this earth. Brothers and sisters, your hope must be upon God who is omnipresent. Your hope must be upon God, who is all-powerful, omnipotent, and supreme power. And you know, the power of God is on nature. For example, you know, Jesus commanded the wind and the ocean. We read that Mark chapter 4, verse 39 onwards. Jesus commanded wind and the ocean, and the wind obeyed. To the ocean obey, praise God. How can we command the wind? How can we command the ocean? There are times when we try to tell our own children to obey what I say. Some children may not obey, but there are some good children, they obey. So sometimes we cannot control our own children, but God, Jesus commanded wind and the ocean and they obeyed. That is the supreme power. And for example, you take Daniel chapter 3, verse 23 to 24. What happened? Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, they were thrown into the fiery furnace. And they were supposed to be burned and reduced to ashes. But the Bible says that Jesus was in the fire, in the fiery furnace, and the fire should not touch Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Look at the power Jesus had towards the fire. Fire could not burn them. Again, Daniel chapter 6, verse 22, you can read. And there Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. And God sent an angel to shut the mouth of the angels so that the lions should not eat, should not touch Daniel. Look at the power. And also you read Acts chapter 1, verse 19. 
sorry, Acts 1, verse 9, Jesus went to heaven. You know, we can go up only by helicopter, car drones, or aeroplane or something. But Jesus went to heaven, not by an aeroplane, not by any instrument, but he was just taken up. At the same time, Matthew 14, verse 25, 27, if you read, Jesus walked on the sea. So what do you understand by this? The gravitational force could not affect Jesus. Anybody walks, nobody can walk on the water. They will get drowned. And nobody can go up without the help of a drone or helicopter or an airplane. But Jesus went. The gravitation force could not pull him down. Jesus walked on the sea. Gravitation force could not pull him down. He did not get drowned. So Jesus, God the Father, Holy Spirit has the supreme power. And your hope must be upon God. Of course, we need to trust people in this world. But I tell you, many people can betray you. But when our hope is upon the Lord, I tell you, God will never betray you. The third point is that God, Jesus, the Holy Heavenly Father, and the Holy Spirit, they're omniscience. To God, what is the meaning of omniscience? God knows everything, the past, the present, and the future. The Bible is the only book which gives the detail of the past, of the present, and the future. No books in the world can give you the details. No books in the world can give you the details of the future. Everybody wants to build the future, but your future is in the hands of God. My dear brothers and sisters, you may not know what's going to happen tomorrow or next year, for 10 years from now, but I want to tell you, Jesus knows your past, knows your present, knows your future. When your hope is upon Jesus, when your hope is upon the Heavenly Father, when your hope is upon the Holy Spirit, He will hold you. He will bless you. He will bless your future so that you will never do a mistake. People do a lot of mistakes in life. That is how, you know, the life is messed up. So keep it in mind that when you have a hope upon the Lord who is omnipresent, is omnipotent, and omniscience, and then you will come to know the truth. That means you will rely on his guidance. You will rely on his guidance. Today, all the people, many people in the world, they are relying on Google. Anything you want, they want information, go to Google. So go to Google. There were days about 30, 40 years back. You know, there was no technology what we have today. So anything we want, we used to go to our parents and take suggestion from them. And today, nobody wants anybody's suggestion. Go to Google. Anyhow, Google gives some good suggestion and also bad suggestions. But if you know the true living God, a true living God, you will take guidance only from them, from God. I give an example. Imagine you are going in a road. And the road will come to a dead end. The road will come to a dead end. And the dead end, the road will branch out. One towards the left, one towards the right. And in the dead end, you will find two people. Imagine you have find two people. One is a dead man. And the other man is alive. Now, when you go to the dead end road, if you want to clarify which side the left road will go, or the right road will go, who will you ask? Will you ask a dead man? No. You will ask man who is alive. You will take suggestion from him. In the same way, brothers and sisters, every day you need, I need guidance from the living God. God who created heaven and earth. You know why? Isaiah chapter 48, verse 17 and 18 says, 
God says, I am the Lord, your God, who guides you in the right direction. Brothers and sisters, I need God to guide me in the right direction. You need, everybody needs to walk in right direction. And because we take wrong direction in a personal life, family life, financial life, you know, that's why our life is getting messed up. So we need proper direction. God says, I am the Lord, your God, who guides you in the right direction. And again, the Lord says, I am the Lord, your God, who teaches you the right things. Who teaches you the right thing. My dear brothers and sisters, today people are in wrong things. They're doing wrong, wrong, wrong things and messed up their life. Only God can teach you the right things. And then God says, in the same words, I am the Lord, your God, who prospers you. We need prosperity. Prosperity is not just having a big house. Prosperity is not having a million dollar house. Prosperity is not having millions of dollars in the bank. Prosperity is joy, your peace, your happiness, your good health, and then a good family life, a good children. And our heart and mind must be enlightened so that we may prepare ourselves for the kingdom of God. These are called prosperity. It's not just money and uh, having, you know, big houses. That is also a blessing from the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we need a proper direction. For example, when Jesus was born, I told you, the angels told the shepherds, can't sang the carols. But the wise men, can, they did not know where was Jesus born. And finally, we read that in Matthew chapter 2, verse 9. As a heavenly father sent the angels to announce to the shepherd, the heavenly father prepared a star. To prepare a star. And this star showed the way where Jesus was born. And the Bible said, the wise men followed the star. They did not follow. So many stars were there. They did not follow any other star except the star which was sent by Heavenly Father. My dear brothers and sisters, you should not follow anything and everything in this world. We need to be very careful. We need to be very careful. We need to be very careful. Whatever comes in the media, whatever comes in the social media, whatever we find in the social media, we cannot follow that. And these wise men never followed any stars. They followed a particular star which was sent or prepared by the Heavenly Father. Only that star led them to Jesus Christ. So, brothers and sisters, when you become the light of the world, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And then Jesus said, you are the light of the world and you can be a star. You can be a star on a Christmas day or the Christmas season. Every house will have a star. And so many stars could be. There are some houses, they have 20 to 50 to 100 stars decorating. Brothers and sisters, if you give $10 or $50, you may get a very good star. But you must be the star for Jesus. You must be a star for Jesus. Having the nature of Jesus. Having the nature of God. And you can guide the people. Not the star to which we get for 10 to $50. But you know what happened? All these wise men. On all the shepherd. When they came to Jesus. We read that in Matthew chapter 2 verse 11. To Luke chapter 2 verse 20. They all fell flat before Jesus and they worshipped Jesus. That was the first Christmas. The first Christmas was celebrated by praising, thanking, and worshipping Jesus. But how is our Christmas today in the world? Christmas means dance. Christmas means liquor. Christmas means all kind of you know, entertainment. 
In the first Christmas was celebrated. Mother Mary was there. Joseph was there. Baby Jesus was there. Wise men were there. Shepherds were there. And many people were there. Mother Mary never told Joseph, get some liquor, get some rum, whiskey, or gin. Come on, let us drink and dance. No, Mother Mary did not do that. Joseph did not do that. They all worship Jesus. So the real Christmas is inviting Jesus into our heart. The real Christmas is celebrating with the presence of the Lord, not with the presence of darkness. And finally, the second part of relying is on the protection. Brothers and sisters, you need protection. Your children need protection. Your business need protection. Your house need protection. Your health needs protection. So we have so many insurances. So many insurances in the world. Suppose if a, if a person dies, if the soul goes to hell, what kind of insurance they can have? Is there any insurance agency for the soul? No. Only Jesus. Only his words. No insurance agency is there for your soul. So you need protection. Job 1.10 says, Job was a man of God who walked with the Lord. And Job, his wife, his children, his property, everything had a hedge. It was covered by the presence of God so that no harm can come to him. But Job had to suffer. The reason you can read later. But brothers and sisters, you need God's protection. Your children need God's protection. Your finance need God's protection. And your health needs God's protection. So let your hope be upon the God, the Father, Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. So he should rely on his protection. And thirdly, rely on his words, his promises, which leads to eternal life. Our hope must be upon his word and upon his promises, which leads to eternal life. In America, they had a survey. How many people read the Bible every day? In the survey, they found out only 7% of Americans read the Bible. Can you believe this? And that means 7% of Americans, they are in the light, followers of Jesus. And other people, they can be Christians, but they don't read Bible. They are not walking in the light, but they have all kind of dark life in, this, in their life. So, brothers and sisters, you read Luke chapter 16, verse 19 onwards, there was a rich man and a poor man. The rich man lived with all his richness. The poor man lived with his poverty. What is the end result? The end result of the rich man, he went to hell. What a tragedy is that? No protection for his soul. And the end result of this poor man, he went to heaven. Brothers and sisters, what kind of life you lead in this life is very important. Richness and poverty is secondary. But real life, whether you're walking in the light or you're walking in the darkness, whether God is absent in your life or devil is absent in your life. So we need to find out if devil is absent, that means we are walking in the light. If God is absent, we are walking in the darkness. So I need to examine. And today we also must be very, very careful about what the world is talking, what the government is talking. Because book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 7 says, in the last days, the devil will have power over religion and politics. In the name of religion, in the name of politics, the world will be messed up. For example, recently, the UN, United Nations, which is in New York, the headquarters, you know what they said? Shocking. From the UN said, the teachings of the Bible and the Christian churches are the enemy for UN. My God. I was shocked 
to read that article. So if you want that article, you can contact me through WhatsApp. I will send you. Or the organizer, they will have this article. I will send it to them. And you can take it. So the UN said, the greatest enemy of United Nations is the churches and the teachings of the Bible. Why? They want right, human right, human right. Brothers and sisters, we are not supposed to have human right. Whatever God says, that must be our right. From the commandments of the Lord, from the teachings of the Lord, and we have to follow. According to you, you can do whatever you want. From the Bible teaches, you should not do this. So Bible is the enemy. From the churches are the enemy. The preachers are the enemy of you. Look at from where the devil is working. So in the days to come, we have to be very, very, very careful to what the government teaches, what the media teaches. So our hope, your hope must be upon God who created heaven and earth. So your hope must be upon Jesus who is going to come as King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And finally, brothers and sisters, as we read Isaiah verse 40, verse 31, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength like eagle. Like eagle. Why? God is mentioning about eagle. Why not beautiful birds? So many beautiful birds are there in the world. But why God did not refer to those birds, but only to eagle? I just want to give you a few points about eagle. And then we are going to pray. Eagles are the only bird that can fly very high. It can fly up to 10,000 feet. Oh, amazing. What a strength they have. So eagles are the only birds in the world. They can fly very, very high. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 to 14. If you could read, Bible says, God can lift you high, high and high and very high can bless you in this world. God can bless you with good health. God can bless you with good portfolio in the world. God can bless you financially. God can lift you up very, very high. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 to 40. Those are the blessings of the Lord. If you want to know to curses, same chapter, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15 onwards, if you could read, you will know how the curse will come. So to birds, among all the birds, only eagle can fly high. So if your hope is upon to the true living God, God the Father, Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, you'll be always lifted up high, high, high. And the second the nature of this eagle, especially during the rainy season, when it starts raining, all the birds will go to their nest. They'll go to some place to avoid the rain. And you know what the eagle do? They will fly above the clouds. Oh, what a fantastic thing. And they are fearless birds. Many birds out of fear, they'll go to the nest. But this eagle, they're not scared about any thunderstorm or the rain that will fly above the clouds. And they will not get stuck with this rain. So when your hope is upon the Lord, God will give you wisdom and knowledge to overcome all the problems in your life. Everyone has a problem. You have a problem. I have a problem. Everybody. But God will give you wisdom and knowledge to overcome those problems. Just like eagles, they fly high above the clouds so that no thunderstorm can affect. And the third point of the eagle. So these eagles have got very sharp and powerful vision. So the eagle can see a small insect. He can see or any tiny animals even three miles away. What a sharp vision this eagle has. A powerful vision. Brothers and sisters, when you hope upon the Lord, 
God the Father, Son Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Your vision is not worldly. Your vision, you will have a great vision for yourself, for your family, for your future, and for eternal life. We are not going to live for a few years in this world. We have to spend millions and millions or trillions of years in heaven. So your vision will be great. Not just money, not just house, not just eating and sleeping, but your vision will be greater up to the eternal life. And finally, one more beautiful thing I want to tell. You know, you eagles, rather birds, can live up to 70 years. But usually, these eagles, by 40 years, they become old. They become blind. They cannot see. You know, all the oldest problems will start. Now, the eagle has two options. One is to die in the old age, at the age of 40. And the other option is very interesting. Very interesting. I was amazed to read about this. What happens is eagles, if they want to extend their life, you know what these eagles will do when the, when the vision is blind, when they're very old, and even the beak is all bent, they cannot eat anything, they cannot cut things. You know, such old eagles at the age of 40, they will go a lonely place, maybe in a rocky area or a mountain, from there, it will start pecking on the stone. From the stone, it will peck and peck and peck. Finally, what happens? The beak comes out. You know, just like the small children, the tooth will fall down. And the same way, when it starts pecking on the stone, the beak will become loose and fall down. And just like a new tooth will grow, we see in the small children, in the same way, a new beak will grow for the eagle. And with this new beak, can this eagle will start pulling out the feathers, pulling out the feathers one by one. It's a very difficult situation, a painful situation. He will start pecking, start pecking, and pulling out, pulling out, pulling out all the feathers. So when the last feather is pulled out, you know how God has created this bird so powerful. So when the last feather is pulled out, a chemical reaction takes place in the body. So a chemical reaction. So when it takes place, the eagle will regain its youth. So it will get its youthfulness. And the vision, which was almost blind, so they get very powerful vision again. So they get good appetite. They get strength to again fly. Oh, now it's up to the eagle. Whether you want to die at 40, or you want to extend your life, to pull out your beak, pull out your feathers, and then regain your youth. My dear brothers and sisters, when you put your faith upon the Lord, when you have hope upon the Lord, and you need to go that process, whatever the eagle went, what is that? You are not going to pull out your hair. You are not going to pull out something. But you are going to pull out your hatred, anger, vengeance, grudges, enmity, ego. All the negative emotion from your mind and from your heart. And that's how you become peaceful. You become young. People who have no to negative emotions. People who forgive everybody, the heart will be always happy, to joyful, peace. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 18, to verse 3 and 4, if you do not become like a small child, you cannot inherit the kingdom of God. My dear brothers and sisters, when you put your hope upon the Lord, think about this eagle. And how it can extend the life. I tell you, brothers and sisters, pull out all your negative emotions. Forgive everybody. You're not forgiving for their sake. You're forgiving for your sake. The eagle is not pulling out the feather for somebody's sake, for its sake. It is painful. But eagle knows, oh, 
I am going to get something new. So this Advent retreat. Today is the first day. We will ask the Lord. Lord, I offer myself. Strengthen me. That I may. Hope. Put my hope. And trust you. All throughout my life. Because you are the only God. You are the only Savior. As the angels sang. The carols. Fear not. Good news. Jesus is born. And now. We have to sing the carols. What is carols? Carols is nothing but preaching the gospel. And people when Christmas season comes. They will start singing carols. Brothers and sisters, singing carols or telling about Jesus is not only about the Christmas season, 24 bar 7, throughout the year, we have to preach the gospel. Fear not. Jesus is born. He is your savior. He is the Lord. He is going to come again. Yes, in the days to come, we are going to sing the carols to our own family members, to our friends, wherever. I am singing these carols or preaching the gospel for the past 40 years around the world, including China and Russia. Um, I'm not going and preaching about Jesus only it. during Christmas. So carol, right? Throughout the world, I go throughout the year, I preach. So now let's pray. Let us surrender our life to the Lord. And let us Offer ourselves. If your hope is upon something, if your hope is upon somebody, and if that hope has led you to hopeless situation, fix up your hope. Let your hope be upon God who created heaven and earth. Now you can raise your hands and keep on praising the Lord. Keep on thanking the Lord. I'll just pray for every one of you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for this Advent retreat through Zoom, Lord. Lord, I surrender everyone who are participating, Lord. Even those who could not participate. Even all those who are going to watch later through Facebook or YouTube or through various media. Lord, I praise. Bless every one of them. To bless every one of them, Lord. All those who hope on the Lord will renew the strength, to spiritual strength, physical strength. Lord, to I pray, anoint everyone with the power of the Holy Spirit to, so that let them have hope upon you, Lord, and so that they may get guidance from you, to protection from you. Yes, Lord. Right now, bless everybody. To bless everybody. Bless them. Bless their children. Bless their family. Bless their finance. Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray. To if anybody is sick, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Let all their sickness be healed, Lord. To let all their sickness, whatever the type of sickness, from head to toe, to all sickness be healed. If anybody is troubled because of the evil powers, because of any kind of sin or curses, in the name of Jesus, I set them free. From all kind of curses, from all kind of bondages, from all kind of evil forces, I set them free, Lord. Jesus, you did not send your servants to just to preach, but to heal and to deliver them and to anoint them with the Holy Spirit. So right now, as they heard your word, let them receive the physical healing. Let them receive the deliverance from sin, curse, and evil powers. And let them be filled by the power of the Holy Spirit. To bless them, bless them, bless them. In Jesus' name I pray. Heavenly Father, amen and amen.